Um, welcome everyone. Today, uh, it is our pleasure at Systems at Play to introduce Art Think Make uh, with Joe Callender. So if you've turned up for that, you're in the right spot. Well done. Um, and we, we hope that uh, you enjoy the talk as well. Um, Systems at Play uh, has been around now for quite a few years. We're up to 442 members. I checked this morning. Uh, still six continents and not in Antarctica quite yet. Um, 48 cities, uh, probably more than 48 cities. Now I need to check on that one. Uh, and we formed um, out of pretty much the the three of us, Mihal, Alidad, and myself formed this group uh, because we saw a lot of the stuff in the agile space was based on quite reductionist thinking. There's nothing wrong with reductionist thinking. It's just that we wanted people to think more more openly and move towards more systems types thinking approaches. And uh, we've been exploring that deep, vast space of systems thinking and trying to find practical ways of applying it as well. Uh, and introducing the, about introducing things to this group, but really uh, using this as a community for discussion and for learning together. Uh, we have a new member though. So it's been Mikhail, Elliot, and myself, and let's say uh, we, we um, uh, have the, the same amount of chromosomes. So we thought we'd, uh, we'd find somebody with a different amount of chromosomes and we'd uh, see if we could actually get some diversity into the group. And just because she's brilliant, as well, we thought we'd uh, introduce Rumor Dak into our organizing group. By the way, um, we, 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 we're part of this large community, so anybody from the community can actually join the group, and we'd, we'd love to see more people involved in helping us organize these things. So Rumor is an amazing Agile coach herself as well, and I'll let her introduce herself, and she's got a little bit to say about an upcoming survey we're doing as well. Thanks, Dave. Can I just start by saying that I am very stroked to join all of you, as well as a little intimidated as well, <laughs> because of the amount of wisdom that is there in this room and in the core group. But I'm really looking forward to my journey with you and to serve the community along with you. About the survey, like any good product, we do want to make this community customer centric. So we would love to know after a few years of engaging with the community, how is it going for the community members? So you will be getting a survey asking you what could be more diverse ways of engaging with you, what is working, what is not working, etc. So stay tuned for the survey coming up soon. Back to you, Dave. Thanks, Rima. Um, and then, of course, we've got Joe. So I'm not going to say much about Joe because he's got a little intro, intro about himself as well in, in the deck that he's doing. But he's um, been uh, looking at a mission of democratizing um, systems thinking, same as we have, really. The five, last five years, he's been looking at this and also He's going to try and frame the talk in terms of talking about systems thinking and uh, framing it around art and photography. I won't give too much away, though. He is an abstract, abstract fine art photographer, and he's a, a, he's amazing. Don't don't expect to invite invite him somewhere without him having to pay for his photography, though. So just 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 as a warning, <laughs> he doesn't do it for free. So I, I'm really excited because um, Ali, and myself, and Joe caught up a few weeks ago to talk about this talk, and it's actually. Something that's really quite close to my heart as well, uh, understanding art and systems thinking at the same time. I think a lot of systems thinkers are also artists, um, just through being systems thinkers, but also either graphical or li literary or um, or, th or through all sorts of different types of, of artwork. Many uh, are musicians uh, or artists in other forms as well. So I'm really interested mm -hmm. in this talk. Um, this is a reminder. Uh, we've got Gene Bellinger on the call, so he'll be he'll make sure that we have to plug the the, the videos as well uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, Gene being the next speaker as well, uh, and Tracy, you, you did a talk with us too, I think, a while back. Part of the panel, I think. Yeah. So we've got a few speakers on here as well, and uh, please visit the YouTube channel. Take a quick shot of the um, of the QR code there, or just go search for Systems at Play within YouTube, and you'll find it pretty easily. Cool. Um, before we start, uh, please, uh, Joe's asked us to keep the questions mostly towards the end. If there's something that, that you really need to talk about, then then maybe at a pause, but really keep the questions to the end. We'll have time for Q&A. Uh, Joe will try to get the talk done before before nine-ish, so we have time to start talking, but of course the talk goes through to 9.30. I have to jump off at nine, so I apologize for that. I have one, one of those rude work meetings that I have to get to, and I'd rather, I know where I'd rather be. Without further ado, welcome Kelly. Without further ado, I'll jump over and stop sharing the screen and hand over to Joe. All right, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen.
So again, thanks everyone for joining. Um, I'm really happy to uh, to be here to present this. Uh, it's been a very uh, highly evolutionary and emergent journey over the last five or so years. Um, Aladad and I interacted uh, around 2018. Um, it, I've gone through several iterations of what I wanted, you know, what, what's bouncing around inside my head. And uh, within the last year, I've ended up um, uh, studying photography, learning how to take photographs, and um, just some big lessons for me have come out of that uh, related to systems thinking. So that's uh, through uh, the artistic side of this. This is how I hope to present this today. Um, it was something, instead of applying photography to systems thinking, I wanted to kind of approach systems thinking through the art of photography. So a quick bio, um, as you can see, I have experience in pretty much all of the major life systems, um, including beer. And uh, uh, the, the most recent uh, experience has been 15 plus years of project and change management during uh, digital transformation in life science industries. Uh, that was uh, taking a lot of um, small startup, medium and large pharma companies from paper environments to digital environments. So uh, my path is there on the, the third bullet. I, everything started out as waterfall. It actually kept being waterfall up until my last project during the pandemic. Um, but outside of that, I took some sabbaticals and uh, explored lean startup. Uh, then I, um, for a couple of years, I did some lean startup weekends, tried to, the craft beer solopreneur project is something I did during the lean startup. Um, and then uh, Agile, just kind of noticing what's going on with the Agile community, um, doing a little bit of uh, thinking around that. And then coming away from that and thinking there's got to be something bigger than product development. And uh, that was a stumbling on systems thinking in, in around 2018. And uh, a new career that's starting this month is I'm now brewing kombucha in a commercial brewery. Uh, it's <laughs> something I had started before the pandemic and the pandemic killed that opportunity. Uh, but a friend has reached out and said, we have a space for you. So I'm jumping back into that and uh, I'm going to do kombucha and photography and we'll see where it takes me. So um, before we get into the my actual journey, I just uh, want to present an image and I want people to just check the, you know, look at the image and think about what it makes you think or feel for a couple minutes or a minute. Okay. Um, any um, quick volunteers? You want uh, single word answers, perhaps? What you feel, what you think? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, for me, it was emergence and birth. Emergence? Great. That's awesome. Any others? Expansion uh, for me. Expansion? Yep. Great. I was thinking of uh, both a flower and the universe. Um, what was the first part? A flower. Flower. Okay. You would actually be the closest. This is a weeping cherry tree in my front yard. <laughs> wow. We have uh, Joe. We have a couple of other comments uh, in the in the chat. So we have light. Oh. Christian movement. Michelle. Christian light down. New beginning. Um, Doctor Who. Lovely. Uh, oh. Energy catalyst. Your front yard. Wow. <laughs> that wasn't wow. a comment. <laughs> wow. No, I think that's that wasn't amazing. a comment. That was just a... <laughs> that's amazing. So so yeah, so we come away from this image and what we're hearing are a lot of different perspectives about uh what we think we see and feel in just one image. So that image uh was just taken last week and it's it's part of a combination of ten plus years of trying to pivot away from 
my old self and toward an, a new, more curious and creative self. And uh, when I go back to my bio, uh, I was only, I, I, when we talked a couple weeks ago with uh, Aldadad and David, um, we got toward the end of the call and I was like, this is me. Art Think Make is me. It's what I did. It's the journey I've been on. So um, it made me reflect back on the sabbaticals that I took. And that's when I was able to, each time I did one, I tried to do something creative and curious. Um, I tried to completely step away from my career and go in a different direction on each sabbatical. So when I go out, I'm driven by a vision for just thinking, okay, I see these, this field of flowers or this uh, stand of trees. And I, I ask myself, what else is there? What's beyond what I think I obviously see? And I think that's, um, you know, these are questions that we can ask about the work we do in, in education, work, healthcare. Uh, what else is there beyond the surface? And it's, as I just explained, it's been quite a long journey. Uh, this honestly is, uh, it probably started in 2007 when I started questioning what was really going on with the work. And then uh, 2012 is when I uh, took my first sabbatical. I spent the first six months getting certified as a coach. And um, from there, I... Uh, I was coaching craft beer consumers at that point. That's what I decided to do with my coaching. And uh, I did a, a craft beer tasting app trying to get consumers, you know, a lot of confusion, a lot of noise in the industry, trying to help consumers um, find their next great uh, beer that they could drink. So, and then uh, it's just been a journey since then, just keeps going. So I like to think, you know, to see beyond what we think we see, we have to become curious. And tapping into or reacquiring access to curiosity uh, is a foundational element for change. And uh, as I just explained through the uh, sabbaticals, uh, just each time, I'm on my third one, uh, each time I tapped a little bit further into the curiosity and uh, through photography, it, it Finally, it feels like a really deep connection. Uh, but what I would like to see is in the, the second statement there is uh, more opportunity to become curious in the spaces where we need to change. You know? So in our personal development, our careers, uh, learning and education uh, in the workplace when we're trying to problem solve, um, you know, if we can get curiosity back, in, or back into those spaces uh, that would be, you know, sort of the ultimate vision of this. Uh, this was on LinkedIn just within the last week or two. And he's, so Matt's asking, why is it that corporates strangle the living crap out of creativity? And I thought that was very timely. And, uh, you know, down at the bottom, it's, it's just education and work. You know, we just kind of chips away at our curiosity and our creativity. And uh, before we know it, we don't really have it anymore. So um, how can we get it back? So uh, when I stumbled upon systems thinking, I, it hit me like a lightning bolt. Uh, Vanilla Meadows, uh, Leverage Points, a very visual person uh, that just spoke to me in uh in droves um and so i you know i dove uh, delve deeper into the subject matter and i had just always had this inkling to try to figure out how to make it more practical more approachable more relatable so that we could stop strangling creativity and i feel like within just the last month it's actually been the wrong question that i've been asking myself So the deeper question for me has become, how do we help humans reconnect with their curiosity and creativity as a foundational element for pursuing change? And so 
through, I've been uh, learning photography for just over a year now. And it was only about six months into it that I was like, I started feeling like there were similarities between the way a photographer thinks and acts and the way we want to create systems thinkers or we want systems thinkers to think and act. And so I just so many uh, parallels for me between the two. Uh, what I've learned from photography is that we need to linger more within the context and conditions, uh, pause more, and pause more deeply to appreciate the connectivity of the elements. Um, prioritizing the decision-making levers for change or creation, dealing directly with the inherent complexity. Uh, photography is a very complex endeavor. It's uh, it's constantly tweaking this or that to get the lighting right or get the focus right or get the composition right. Uh, you're doing uh, multiple takes. You know, I can, I've taken probably over 50,000 images in the last year or so. I have about just over 3,000 that I've saved in my Lightroom account. So it gives you an idea of how much experimentation and how much uh, tweaking elements in order to uh, deal with the inherent complexity of photography can be. Uh, it's also, for me, it's been a very effective pattern for delivering on a vision. And we'll get into that shortly. Uh, the thing I like about it and why I'm, I'm very interested in photography is that you sort of, you know, we go to people and we say, you need to change the way you think, but that's, you can't really grab that. It's very intangible. So um, based on you know, what I'm kind of observing from photography, I feel like it's a way to embody a change of thinking. And of course it's very immersive when you, when you get out there and you're uh, taking images, you're very immersed in your setting, your elements of complexity, your subject matter, uh, things are coming in to the the picture, so you have to adjust. Uh, it's just very, uh, to me, it's very, um, what's the word, very uh, applicable to, you know, dealing with complexity as, as things are kind of ebb and flowing while you're uh, problem, solving a problem or designing something. And it's, it's also a lot of fun to do. It's for me to get out there and to, to try to look at things differently than just looking at the, you know, the quote unquote normal scene, you know, getting lower, walking around the object, uh, moving my arms, you know, I, I do abstract photography. So what can I do with movement while I'm taking the picture? And the biggest thing is that it actively gets us shifting our perspective. Even if you're taking, you know, my perspective shifting might be a little different because I'm doing abstract, but even if you're taking a quote unquote normal photo and you get out to the, the scene or the setting and it's not quite what you thought it was. And so you have to shift your perspective in order to get a better, capture a better image. And, it, you, and that's part of this, you know, 50,000 images, but I've only saved 3,000. Uh, you, you're taking, you know, tens of images for one scene, and, but you're only saving one. So we'll stop here to reflect again. Uh, just take uh, 30 seconds or so to look at this image. And uh, when you're ready, share what you feel. And um, either David or Aladad, if you can read off any of the um, comments, I can't seem to see them. We get, uh, we get flight, uh, flight. From Tracy. You got uh, bird flight, smoke, feeling of spiritual. Dave, um, birds, Roma. Yeah, so these are um, 
strangely enough, these are just uh, Canadian geese flying over a local pond. Um, one area that I'm exploring is actually taking uh, abstract photos of birds in flight. And uh, actually this one, I uh, was having a portfolio review by a New York gallery a few weeks ago. And, uh, and we were, I had put together a bunch of images and we were going through them and she's like, yeah, oh, these are good. And then something happened and she got a glimpse of this one and she's like, ooh, what's that? So, uh, and then she went deeply into like what it, she, it looks like birds, but I'm not sure it's birds. Um, so those of you who think it's birds, you're right. Yes, it's, a, it's a two or three Canadian geese flying through the sky. I just like how they, for me, they're painting with me, you know, as their wings are flapping. So they're, I'm painting with my lens and they're painting with their wings at the same time. And then this one uh, was a very popular one over the winter. I went out one at, at night and uh, just walked around my neighborhood and uh, got the snow on some branches. It had just finished snowing. And this is an effect where I have several of these where it actually looks like the branches are printed on a piece of paper, giving the texture of the image. So something as I'm trying to go deeper into what photography means for me, I've been I've started reading some books about the theory and history of photography on and its impact on society. Uh, so the the photography reader is a book I just uh, bought last week, and um, I found this quote in it or this sentence in it uh, very um, thought provoking. It says, not only do we want to ask how photographs operate, we also want to ask how photography can be used to resist dominant structures and practices. So if I think about my abstract photography, it's uh, there's a little bit of a, a rebellious streak in there of uh, maybe it's the you know, 10 plus years of or 15 plus years of corporate project management work. And I'm trying to break out a little bit and and really, really tap into that curiosity that's inside me. Um, I'm also resisting, you know, what a, a photographer, you know, a normal photograph looks like. So this, um, it, it, it speaks beyond my image. It's like, okay, how can we use photography to look beyond the dominant structures and practices within systems? So I feel like that's a very powerful question. So the vision I have for interpreting settings and objects is the art that I bring into the world. Hopefully you think it's art. I, I do. I love it <laughs> regardless. Um, and so my question to myself is how can I help others bring the art they possess into their world? And this uh, image here is a, a local waterfall. It was actually during the fall. So I did work in a fall picture, David, actually. Um, you can see some of the gold. This was a waterfall with trees across the top of it. And I just did a panning motion to bring the trees down into the splashing of the water. Uh, this is, you know, after I talked to David and Alidad, I was reflecting on what is art. So I looked it up and it very clearly says it's, it has to do with something visual. And that caused me to pause. And I, I felt like it was, depending on your perspective, it was more or less than that. It was, it's not that it has to be visual. It can just be the human capacity for uh, being curious and being able to express a vision through curiosity. So for me, art is not, it doesn't have to be the medium. It can be the thought itself. And then um, on April 10th, I recently started a, a Substack newsletter 
and I'm just starting out there. And there was a prompt about if you would write a book, what would you write about? And so I responded and someone uh, put up a, a comment about, um, have you seen this other post? So I went to check it out and that's when I learned of art thinking just a couple of weeks ago. And what art thinking says is let's try to take the artistic mindset and approach and bring it into non-artistic settings like uh, a school, well, you know, education, work, um, you know, it could self, uh, self-improvement, self-development, uh, a career change, you know, any of these things that would you would typically say are non-artistic in nature. Um, yeah, can we bring some of that art thinking into those spaces? And this is just some of the thinking that's going on in the art thinking community. Uh, we always, we talk a lot about uncertainty and systems thinking. And uh, so there, there's the site Art Thinking Network where it's directly saying, you know, our uncertainty has become the new certainty. Uh, that speaks very strongly to me. Um, here's another one. What is the role of art in the 21st century? And how can we apply the art for better future society? So it, it goes on to say art is a catalyst for shaping a better future society opening up perspectives uh, that's been like a core theme of this uh, deck encouraging curiosity um, art thinking is a process of applying artistic thinking and the artful view to a broader range of challenges and i love the the first question in the um, second paragraph how can we become more human because uh, for me when we look at all of the most pressing issues on LinkedIn about you know what we need to fix or improve. It's all the human stuff. It's the leadership, the engagement, the well-being, um, the learning, it, the, uh, the mindfulness. All of these things have to do with how the humans are doing within the systems. And this was the uh, Substack article that really was like um, the next lightning bolt. As I said, I've, for years, I've been looking at um, how to make this more approachable, practical for, and when I say that, I mean people, you know, everyday people in their lives, uh, not, um, it's more of a bottom up approach. So enabling their curiosity and creativity as a human uh, just feels like the foundational thing to me. So this is where I introduced that uh, Art Think Make. Uh, this is we're going to be uh, exploring the art of thinking through photography. That's the platform that I'm working on. I'm going to be building going to, uh, you know, a mixture of uh, digital online. Um, in person is a big thing. I, personal goal of mine is to start moving more offline and back into real world uh, in person experiences. Uh, so that's definitely, uh, I'm in touch with a local arboretum that has a classroom, uh, trying to get in there and get people, you know, 15, 20 minutes of instruction and then turn them loose in the, uh, in the Arboretum to explore their creativity, explore their curiosity, try to get them, you know, shifting their perspective from just taking a picture from standing over something, you know, bending down, uh, looking around uh, an object, uh, taking a different angle, uh, doing something abstract, changing the lighting or the focus. So here's how I define art, think, make. The art is the innately human vision for change or something new. Uh, for me, that's just the vision as a thought. 
The think part is the traits, the mindset, and the patterns for honoring that vision. And then you're ready to make something when those two things are aligned uh, in order to create a, a new thing born out of curiosity and creativity. So uh, in this presentation, I challenge you to consider art as an amazing platform and opportunity for pursuing systems change. And the challenge is also to start thinking about how we embody the mindset shift and deliver it into other areas where we face challenges due to a lack of inherent curiosity and creativity. And with that, we can end here. Uh, I do have a couple other slides, but uh, we can do some uh, Q&A or uh, comments, anything. Cool. Thank you, Joe. Um, there's, I'll, I'll hand over to the group then. I want to ask questions. Is there anything that came up in the in the chat first that we want to work through? I think, Jean, you had a, a comment earlier on about um, art in the workplace or creativity more, more specifically. Yeah, well, you know, the, the initial thought was along the lines of you can't create a jungle of clearing in the jungle unless you actually transform the jungle itself. Otherwise, the clearing goes away. So to spark someone's creativity in the context of an environment that stifles creativity, it, it doesn't buy you anything except their ongoing frustration. So the best thing is if, if you awaken their creativity, maybe you get them to move. Right. And I would agree, that's one of the things I've felt or observed is that, um, you know, there's so much inertia. When I was doing the digital transformation projects, there's just so much inertia that um, I, maybe we were wrong to think that we could change the work because there was just so much kind of like that jungle that already existed. And so this, what I'm presenting here is taking people away out of that context and conditions just to try to increase the, the chances that they'll be able to tap into some curiosity and creativity. It still remains, okay, we'll get out there in the Arboretum and they'll take pictures and they'll get curious and creative. Uh, but the challenge is, okay, how do we start bringing that back into a, a workplace or a, a school room uh, and I, that's just something that has to be explored. I think it's really interesting, uh, as Jane was talking about that. I think uh, we've all been in places which were which probably stifled creativity, but creativity was the only path forward. I think about the the early years of moving into the agile space. We were we had to make up most of the stuff we were doing. We had to be creative about it. Um, the 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 patterns or the playbooks didn't exist. We had to. Uh, invent the new things or be creative with them. And it was probably, right. for me, that was probably the most joyous part of my work career. Um, now it's, it seems to be all just pattern matching rather than actually being more creative as well. So the, I think, Gene, although the environment stifle or the organisation, the bureaucracy, whatever, might stifle the creativity, I think where there is uh, a need for newness or a new need for change or the, when nothing exists, the creativity has to be there as well. So I think that's it's both of those situations. Yeah. I would say, you know, in the beginning, in the early 2000s, when those projects started, they did feel creative. And then about seven years in is it just, I just started feeling like we're working more for the technology than the technology is working for us. And we got into this pattern of um, put the technology first, and build around the technology. And that, that continued up until my last project in um, 2022 at my joint, when I was working remotely on, on that, yeah, on a, a, another digital transformation project. That one was the first in my career that actually failed at that point. So that really, you know, that failure really got me like one when I got laid off from that role and that really like had me stepping back and looking at, um, I mean, that was just, 
under two years ago. So I feel the the this whole idea of trying to find uh, the more practical and approachable way has really accelerated from that point. And then just the creative outlet of photography just kind of like was the final piece. Well, actually the final piece was this idea of art thinking, but being able to, it gave me a way to sort of apply photography to this through art thinking. There is a question from Roma as well. Roma, did you wanna? Yep, thanks Soledad. Um, thanks, Joe. The pictures were amazing. I was just fascinated by the abstract images. I love photography, but I haven't done a lot of abstract photography. So they just made well, We're going to get you out there. Pose and, <laughs> pose and think so much. Um, my question is, around your experience of using such non-conventional ways of facilitating systems thinking use of art in, say, corporate environments or more um, non rt environments, if I can call them so, or any other setting as well. How have you used this with people? Uh, honestly, not yet. As I said, um, I just discovered our thinking a couple of weeks ago. So uh, I'm now actively exploring opportunities to uh, basically you know, to go back to the lean startup days and, and meet with people and ask them what they're willing to, to do and what, what it looked like for them uh, and start testing it. Uh, it's 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 a brand new thing. I uh, do have, um, except for your example, Roma. Uh, we were doing a, a strategic planning day with an entire mm -hmm. portfolio. Took me a while to convince the leadership to bring the whole team and the ecosystem around them, our business partners, everyone that worked with that portfolio. Um, so, the key theme was that group of people have been working together for a few years and they were kind of stuck in some patterns and everything we tried, we tried agile, we tried lean, we tried force, we tried changing people, nothing worked. They were stuck. Like, And uh, we kind of in this strategic planning, we, we use a lot of different things like open space and things like that. But um, a part of it, which was the highlight and that brought the energy back to the group was we look at the group and say, imagine you want to hire someone into your team, not the team today, the team you want it to be. And then we spread the room all 120 people um, into smaller groups and say, come up with some concepts. One team came up with the performance. You had the general manager of the group, one of the most serious people I've seen. He was standing then pretending I'm in a branch and this is what we do. This is how our service helped the team the other team built some um the statue to kind of represent their value the other team built some um videos training videos it was awesome it was like fun creativity and uh and i always say imagine if you wanted to do all of that with a presentation there was no way it was, there was multi layers of meaning people were engaged we see new leadership emerged during that day. You know, people started to lead the smaller group that you would have always considered them as, oh, they're so passive and they were thinking of letting them go. So I guess um, for me, this was, I, I think, Joe, thank you so much for your um, for your thoughts. I think the this was the consolidation of something that started a few years ago for me and the whole art think make. So anyway, that was just an example of how we use art, but I like the framing of art is not just painting or so it's 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 our vision for change or something new, so something different. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say new. Sometimes it's just different. Um, so anyway, that was just a yeah. example. Um, I think there is one more example, more more question from Christian, and then. Maybe we can continue, Joe, if there is more you want to share. Um, Christian, did you want to? Yeah, well, I'm mute. Hi, Joe. Uh, thank you so much for no. that presentation. Uh, I really loved it. Um, I just recently um, come, come aware as well of the connection between creativity, art, and innovation, or also just connection to your own um, sense of, uh, you would call, 
spirit and 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 and, and inside and intuition as well to bring things into the world. So really, really great, great uh, presentation and and talk. One thing that I not picked up on was the on one slide you talked about uh, the inertia of um, that that people are feeling like that sort of inability to move forward. Um, and I would, was really curious when when you were discovering your own or noticing at others, what, what do you see as behavior or the way people speak or act uh, when, when there's lots of inertia and when there's a lot of, um, you know, lack of creativity? What are you observing there? Um, just speaking from my own experience, um, the lack of creativity was um, sort of defaulting to the, the vision was the artifacts that guided the business. And for me, that's not a human vision for, for change. Uh, so uh, when we think about, okay, how we're gonna fix this and we, so we, uh, a big thing I always think about is uh, attempting to do the wrong thing more right. So we're talking about changing the way we work, but we look at, we look at the artifacts that already exist and we change the artifacts or we try to do the artifacts better than we did in the past. And that sort of just keeps us uh, in a loop more toward the past or the current than actually discovering what's new. You know, obviously the opposite of that is starting to do the right things wrong. You know, that that's learning. You know, we're, we're trying something, we're not getting it right, but we're gonna keep trying it until we get it right. Um, so I, that's what I've observed. I mm -hmm. And just in my own, journey here along this, um, what I presented, um, it was the biggest thing I would say about the sabbaticals is that when you take one, at least for me, it, it took me months to kind of slough off what was in my head. Hmm. And then I could start, I could get back to zero and I could build from there. Yeah. Uh, and I, that's been a key takeaway for me. So the only reason I was able to do that is I stepped away from the inertia. If I had, and I, um, I'm like threading the needle on this, like <laughs> career wise uh, right now with a family and a house and everything. Um, but if I had just went back to my business analyst role in digital transformation, and I feel very strongly if I just kept doing that and tried to work on this, at the same time, it, if I was able to create anything new out of it, it still would have been more married to that work than being something new. So I think my own journey, um, I, you know, can we all step away from the noise and the mess for months? Um, I hope, I'm hoping that I can condense it down into something where people can, you know, you can take a month and, and learn from all my mistakes and we can accelerate a, a transformation mm. in a much shorter time. I hear you. You were just going where I was thinking. I don't think many people have that luxury of taking all that time. Yeah. Uh, and then I was thinking, you know, how, how do you, how does this become a daily discipline and a daily practice that you could use in order to to bring this to life? Um, besides the point that everyone is very busy and has a lot of stuff to do and a lot of things that we don't think are valuable, how do we incorporate that into, into into everything um, and, and into our being, I think. You know, you talked a lot about embodiment as well, and, and how do we bring this to life uh, through our bodies, not just through our minds? I think is a is a real good, good, uh, good goal um, and good opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? I'd be really here, interested to hear um, Tracy's comments because as, as I was listening to what Joe was saying, uh, funny enough, I had one of these sitting next to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. The yeah. Habits of systems. I remember that. And I was thinking, well, how many of these things are actually the habits of artists as, at the same time? Definitely seeking different points of view is, is an obvious one. Uh, I was seeing multiple points of view. But I was wondering, uh, Tracy, if you were thinking the same thing as, as Joe was talking about art thinking. Yeah, I, I was really appreciating, Joe, the, just the idea that the creativity and curiosity are just so important to learning and to innovation and to being that kind of adaptive leader if you're in a leadership. Mm -hmm. 
the world a better place. And so um, I, I, we're on such the same page about bringing this, figuring out how to bring this to everyone and anyone, um, making systems thinking, which sounds very, you know, formal, how to make it accessible to right. really help the curiosity create. So I'm, I'm curious if I can ask a question. So what kind of things are you thinking about planning and ways to make that happen, especially for novices, like people who hear the term and their eyes roll back in their head because it's like, oh, you know, here we go, the next new thing. Right. And that's been the whole point is to, con I've been constantly steering, steering, steering away from the more, you know, the highly uh, formal systems thinking literature. I love it. I, it. I totally embrace it. It resonates so strongly with me. It's like, if I had had that in 2007, I, I mean, I probably would have been kicked out even faster, but <laughs> <laughs> but I would have known that that's the thing, right? Uh, it, it took me from 2007 to 2018 to find that that quote unquote answer. Um, so that's why I, I, in my head, I'm seeing, uh, let's go do a fun activity like photography. You don't even have to bring a camera. It can be your phone. You can even have a photographic memory. All I need you to do is shift your perspective. This is not a technical course. If you decide you love photography, I have friends I can refer you to. They'll help you pick out the camera and they'll give you the hard technical lessons. For me, it's been more about barely touching on the technical and really going deep into the curiosity and creativity of it. So that's how I want to coach this or facilitate it, just the curiosity, you know, tapping back into that curiosity and creativity that most of us have lost through our other experiences. And I can't tell you beyond that. Are they going to be able to take it back into their workplace? I don't know. That's the next piece. Someone's going to come out of this and say, I want to bring this to work. And then we're going to do that experiment at that point. Yeah. But it's to stay away from the the systems thing. I even asked on my Substack the other day. Like, I I feel a need to keep peppering it in there, along with the photography, because uh, it just so comes so naturally to me in my head. Um, so I asked, you know, do you want it here or do you want it in a separate place? <laughs> so um, here is a. Here's an experiment. You know, I've been I've been thinking about. I've been asked to do some sessions, presentation, typical thing for a coaching community where I currently work. And uh, just hearing you, I'm thinking maybe I'll ask them to do exactly that. Just go to our outside of the building where we all work and just go and take some pictures. And then that's the course and system that's a, thinking. That's all. That's a wonderful segue. It's like you're reading my mind because that's what the next few slides are. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll go back and let's go through these last few slides. Um, let me share again. Okay, so now we have a chance to, ex oh, I just misspelled that, <laughs> to extend this into a learning opportunity. Uh, one of the common, th the core themes of this whole presentation has been about uh, perspective shifting. Uh, so, I mean, photography is an incredible activity for that. So, uh, you know, we're going to practice curiosity, completely voluntary. But what I'm, you know, when you step away from this, you don't have to go very far. You can find something in your room, in the room you're in. Or if, if you're heading into work after this on your commute, uh, local park, uh, I highly recommend get outside. Um, as a photographer, my wife is always telling me to get outside more <laughs> because... I'm just, I'm inside processing the 3000 images and, and trying to get better at culling what my art is. Um, so 
get out there and take some images, take three or four images, find an object or a setting and try to shift your perspective on that object. You have a lot of things to work with. You can change your distance. You can change the angle. You can get low, get high from this side, that side. You can uh, add some composition by uh, you know, doing a wide angle or um, macro, getting up really close. If you don't know what macro is, macro is like hyper close up images. People do that a lot with flowers and um, insects. Um, you can do a macro and then come out a little, a little bit, take another picture, come out, you know, now you have the flower, now you have the garden, now you have the yard or the arboretum, that kind of thing. Uh, you can change the lighting. Uh, if you don't know how to change the lighting in your camera or your phone, you can take the same uh, object different times of the day. And I'm not, you know, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for perspective shifting, just like I explained. Um, I'm not looking for technical perfection. I'm just looking for experimentation and perspective shifting. You can change the focus. Um, I like making things blurry. So uh, if you know how to edit, you have Lightroom or Photoshop, you can put it in there and go crazy with it, uh, with your editing. I I try to keep mine as somewhat true to nature, but I do get, get a little carried away sometimes because it, it, it's just the way the image feels as I'm editing it. So, um, you know, I invite you to get out there and uh, do three or four images. And then here are the prompts to, you know, I would like you to kind of write about the experience. You know, what was the art behind that uh, perspective shifting? What kind of thinking process did you have to go through to uh, maintain your vision or to just make it happen? If there was a shift in your thinking, you know, what did that feel like? And then you get out there and you make it. What actions did you take as you were doing it? One of the core lessons of photography, I haven't quite figured out how to explain it, is that it takes you from the knowledge to the doing that cycle much faster, much more uh, rapidly. Because you're going to have a vision. You're going to think about how to do it. You're going to do it. It's not going to work. So you're going to change your vision. You're going to try again. Uh, you may have to change your thinking a little bit. And you're going to make another image. And you may make, like I said, you know, 10, 20, 50 images. You try to shoot birds in flight, you can take 50 images and get two or three that are keepers. Um, so that's what I, that's another reason I like photography is this, this whole rapid cycling opportunity that, that exists with it. So those are your prompts for uh, writing about the perspective shifting exercise and then the last slide is just to keep in touch i do have a sub stack uh, just starting out um, it's only a couple weeks old you can of course follow me on linkedin i am working on an art think make site trying to decide the direction for that uh, a little uncertain right now um, i am talking to the arboretum about doing an in-person thing and uh when you're ready, if you do the uh, perspective shifting exercise, you can send me your three or four images and your a little uh, blurb on the, the Art Think Make explanation to uh, Art Think Make at Gmail. So you just forward the JPEGs and, and then we'll get into a conversation about, you know, you know do you want to share it um, somewhere? I can compose it into a Substack uh, post for you. Uh, and just get a dialogue going on this this opportunity to start uh, shifting perspective and tapping more into curiosity and creativity. Any more questions about the exercise? Any definite yeses? <laughs> I think we had for you, um, Christian. <laughs> I thought I lost everyone. <laughs> no, no, no. We have for you already. I actually literally just took some pictures, but um, so yeah, take the you know, use this on your picture. Yeah, <laughs> use this on your team. You know, just have them do this, and it's Definitely. again just playing with perspective shifting and and um, being uncertain about being curious. 
navigating that? I think what I love about this show is um, everyone now, they have got a phone and uh, with, with relatively good cameras and some capabilities for exposure and light and those sort of things. Yeah. So this is definitely a um, simple but profound experience we can do with our team, not just about system thinking. You actually got me thinking a lot of um, exercise we do with teams or even leadership teams, right? This is a wonderful metaphor. And I think for me, the strength here was you don't See, need that's to know funny. anything that's... about formal systems thinking, right? Right. And maybe I haven't made it clear. It's, it's to just start creating the foundation. Not to, We're not going to jump into system thinking. We're going to see if you get curious and creative yeah. first. And then... Maybe, you know, if you're in business or, or in education, then we can explore, you know, going into a more like dedicated workshop or longer term experience mm. uh, where we can navigate taking these photography workshops and figuring out how they how to transmit them over to uh, some of the work we're doing and maintaining I'm, that uh, curiosity. Uh, Tracy, do you have to go? Yeah, no, Joe, this makes me think of an idea that um, a group that I was working with, this was their idea. They were each asked to bring a picture, uh, a photograph of something that reminds me of the importance of the mission of this work. And it was early childhood education in the U.S. And um, and they created a quilt because they wanted mm -hmm. this blanket of images and they each got to talk about you know why they chose what they chose and some of them were abstract some of them were were of of kids and uh, and images and metaphors and this quilt became like the and every time they met became like the title page to remind them and and the quilt can also be dynamic because they were adding pictures and yeah oh, that's them. amazing it's really kind of neat it just reminded me of of your work and how important it is that's an amazing example, yeah. There's limitless ways to take this. Mm -hmm. So Aladad, yeah, if, I mean, if you need ideas, reach out. And yeah, absolutely. I'm something to already thinking out. of something crazy, like um, or was trying to get people to think about critical system heuristics and, you know, where you have the role of the, what's the role of the experts, what's the, who's got the power, who is impacted by the change. And this could be, I was just thinking in my head, uh, get someone who's good at photography and then just get people to take some pictures and then that person start to help them and the impact of the expert in the room. That, so just, it just started, I think the, 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 the power of this is um, everyone is an artist. If you're a human, you're an artist by nature, right? So, and, and now we have got, um, easier tools um, for people to express that. So it's a great opportunity um, to help people. Yeah, I can definitely that. see it expanding into yeah. other arts. It's just that I'm I'm in the photography, so that's where it's starting. Um, me. The, there was another example. Um, Roma uh, went to an OD conference uh, a year ago to, in, in Geelong um, in, in Australia. And uh, it was an international audience um, organizational development. And one of the workshop was we had um, the uh, First Nation uh, Aboriginal artists came in and there was this massive canvas and everyone got a, a brush. And then we went to that workshop and we started to draw. And the, at the end of it, we had this beautiful, beautiful um, painting. And what they did was, it was impromptu. They haven't thought of it that way, it just occurred to them during the workshop. They, The next day they came in and they cut, it was a massive canvas, like a few meters. Um, so they cut it into pieces like this and then gave it to the um, participants and said, next time we meet, can you bring it if we can put it back together? So by just mm -hmm. doing that, they created something together and they get they took a piece with themselves and they are forever connected through that. So it is sort of something you can't do with a presentation or a or a book or something like that. So right. I think the art piece is quite deep. So thank yes, you for this one. Yeah. That's a great example. 
Okay, I guess we are uh, officially uh, done. I think four minutes over, but um, but we are staying for another couple of minutes. We're hanging out if you guys want to stay as well. Uh, ask more questions from Joe or just have a chat. And then um, what we'll do is usually um, we take the recording. We need to edit it a little bit and then I'll put it up on our channel. Um, the other thing is, um, I guess the chat um, was quite, you know, insightful. Um, so yeah, we'll... I was just wondering, is there a way to save that and get it? Yeah, a copy of. Yes, it? Yeah, yeah, we usually we put can, it as comments but... on the oh, well, uh, well. on the YouTube. Yeah, just awesome. below the thing. It's yeah, because just... I'm I'm just trying to catch up on it, and I'm seeing a lot of great stuff. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, we'll send you the the file as well, Joe, if if you want. So, awesome. That's all good. Thanks, Tracy. Take care. Thank enjoy you, Tracy. your enjoy your vacation. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Hey, Gene. Bye all. Thank, Thank you, you so Joe. much for joining. Gene, Take care. Really, really enjoyed it. Thanks, Gene. Thanks for joining, Gene. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank Kelly. Kelly. Thanks Bye. for joining. Thank Kelly. Bye.